Have you guys ever gotten super hyped up for a video game that you've been anticipating for years just to be severely let down when it finally comes out? Well, that basically sums up the experience of Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. Security Breach is known to be the most divisive game in the entire series, as while a fair amount of people still enjoyed this game, the majority of the fandom views this game as the absolute low point in the franchise's history, and a lot of players outside of the Five Nights at Freddy's community just view the game as an absolute joke. And honestly, it's easy to understand why. Security Breach was hyped up to be a major step up for the franchise. The trailers made the game out to be an almost AAA-like experience that ditched the sit-and-survive mechanics of the previous games, and planned to bring in free-roaming mechanics, which was something FNAF fans have been wanting ever since a fan game called The Joy of Creation first presented the concept of Five Nights at Freddy's being free-roam. The hype up until when Security Breach actually launched was something special. It really felt like all of us who grew up with this franchise re-entered our FNAF phases, and on top of that, this new game was attracting a lot of new players towards the series since it was being so heavily promoted by PlayStation, as they had console exclusivity at the time. But then the game came out, and to say this was an ugly launch would be an understatement. Security Breach had one of the worst launches I have ever seen. This game was so buggy when it came out, it was unplayable to a good amount of the player base. And I mean literally unplayable, as personally, I got softlocked in multiple locations throughout my playthrough, and I just could not progress. And I know from looking at forums when this game came out and other YouTube videos that this was not an isolated incident. Eventually, patches were introduced that fixed these softlocking issues, but the game still remained a mess. Even when I went back and played through this game recently to make this video, I still encountered a ton of bugs and issues during my playthrough, but in all honesty, the bugs aren't even Security Breach's biggest issue. The game is just generally bad. While the Pizza Plex is a very aesthetically pleasing location for the game, the actual level design is abysmal and repetitive, and the enemies are so overused that they aren't even scary. I bet I'm your favorite. I'll admit, there's some really cool segments in this game, like Monty's boss battle, or the endoskeleton warehouse, but the majority of this game just felt half-baked. Also, the story in this game is an absolute mess, and makes no sense at all whatsoever, even by FNAF standards. Which is saying something. So I'll admit, my expectations for Ruin were very low, as I could not imagine how a DLC for a game this bad would actually be good, but I ended up being pleasantly surprised. The Ruin DLC is honestly exactly what Steel Wool needed to make to salvage this game. This DLC does so much right that the main game got wrong. Now this DLC has a much simpler story, but this simplicity actually worked to its advantage. The entire plot of this three hour DLC is that Gregory, the protagonist from the main game, has got himself trapped inside of the burned down pizza plex after the events of the main game, and his friend Cassie has taken it upon herself to go into the place and save him. The only issue I have with this plot is that I have no idea who this new protagonist is or their relationship with Gregory, though maybe that's explained in one of the seven books this game has. And if that's the case, feel free to let me know in the comments as I'm genuinely curious. But back on topic, the atmosphere that Ruin has is so much more fitting to the horror genre and is reminiscent of both FNAF 3 with the rotting hallways, but also has a lot of sci-fi elements that can be found in Sister Location, which I think this is a great blend for this game. Another thing I will mention is that the level design of the Pizza Plex is much better this time around. Yes, it is a much more linear experience than the base game, but personally I prefer it this way. This allowed for each and every area to be unique from the last, as each area would have a different enemy encounter from the previous one, and some areas would actually not have an enemy in them at all, which would add to the tension since you the player would never actually know when the next encounter would occur. I also really enjoyed how this DLC had a fair amount of variety in its gameplay. This DLC had a much better use of a camera system, and there are also these certain cameras where you need to play audio cues to lure enemies away, similar to Springtrap in FNAF 3. This DLC also added a whole new aspect to its gameplay with the Vanny Mask. The mask was basically an advanced VR headset that would warp the pizza plex around Cassie. The main objective throughout the DLC is to use this mask to turn off these power nodes to shut down all the remaining security systems in each to the areas, but the mask would also allow for traversal in certain areas that would be blocked off without it, so you actually had to take the mask on and off at certain times to progress. But the mask also has its own drawback. If you were to wear it for too long, this glitch trap like enemy would spawn, and if you were caught by him when you're in the mask, it would summon one of the animatronics to the area to get you. 
This added a layer of strategy to using the mask, which I really appreciated. But moving on, I will say I enjoyed the majority of my Ruin experience, but I have to admit there are two issues I still have with this DLC. The first and more minor issue being the DLC still has its own set of bugs. While there are significantly less glitches when compared to the base game, they still exist. But since bugs can always get patched out, I would say the biggest issue with the DLC is that it has underwhelming endings. So at this point, I'll be entering spoiler territory, so if you haven't finished Ruin or don't want to be spoiled, skip to the conclusion chapter of this video. Alright, so while Ruin does a lot right with the story this time around, it still fumbled the endings. The last chapter for the most part is not great outside of this scene where Cassie and Roxanne have a moment together, which is by the way, the best scene in the whole DLC. And I actually hope they build upon the relationship these two have in the future. So yeah, I do have to give Steel Wolf some credit for having some actual good character development for Roxy. But back to where this DLC fumbled. They introduced this new antagonist called the Mimic. I know this character is from these Tales of the Pizza Plex books. However, as someone who hasn't read them, and I'm sure the majority of the community has not read them before playing this DLC. So the endings are just confusing to anyone who hasn't kept up with Five Nights at Freddy's media outside of the games. I know it's a staple of FNAF to always leave confusing endings to resolve in later entries and to add to the overcomplicated lore, but this is a bit much. And the endings just felt rushed and felt like they were made just to hype up upcoming games such as Help Wanted 2 or whatever they're going to make next after that, instead of making a satisfying conclusion for Security Breach. But overall, the lackluster endings did not ruin my time with this DLC. Wait, did I accidentally say a pun? Overall, Ruin was a very solid package that I thoroughly enjoyed my time with. Would I say this DLC redeemed all the mistakes of Security Breach? Absolutely not. The main game is still dog shit. However, this DLC did get me hyped for future game releases. And hopefully this DLC is a good sign of the quality the games will be going forward. But we will have to wait and see if that's the case.